Hello and uh, welcome everybody to my session about Crash, uh, the shell for the JVM. Uh, okay, so we have plenty of demo and a lot of code to read, but first of all I would like to apologize in advance for uh, all the semicolons I may forget because uh, I know pretty well Groovy, but uh, I'm not like you, a daily Groovy user. I do a lot of runtimes that integrate with Groovy, but uh, I Unfortunately, I don't have the opportunity to code much in Groovy, so uh, my code style uh, sometimes is a bit uh, Java-ish. And uh, Guillaume often uh <laughs> reminds me it. So about me, um <coughs> my name is Julian Viet. Uh, uh, my daily job now is uh, doing, I've been doing portal development for 10 years. Uh, I started doing that at at uh, Red Hat and before that at JBoss. Uh, I was the founder of JBoss Portal and um, now I'm working on the gating project for a company called Exo Platform. My company used this uh, portal project to, to create an enterprise social network. So it's uh, pretty interesting if, uh, if you are in that kind of stuff. Um, besides that, uh, let's move on. Uh, about this talk, um, yeah, so I haven't done that. Uh, you can, if you use Twitter, it would be awesome if you can uh, mention at CrashHub or dash CrashHub uh, in your tweets. And uh, everything we're going to do, not everything, but you can try Crash Online, at least the first comments. Uh, we are going to, to see how to, to create comments to, or to write them, and you can try them either using uh, try.crashhub.org in that case, you have an empty shell. But if you are, so I'm going to tweet it now, hopefully. But if you are, uh, if you use this, it will preload it with, uh, so I have to, it will preload it with, uh, so let's tweet it, sorry. I should have done it before. It will preload it with the, the command we, we are going to study. So this is tweeted on at CrashHub. And if you open it in your browser, so it, it works on with WebSockets and JavaScript, you see you will have the same stuff I'm doing. So during the presentation, you can try it and you can use it. And we have here the several comments uh, that we'll study. And this is nicely done with a GitHub integration. It's uh, behind the scene, it's a GIST. So it's pretty awesome what we can do today with uh, all those stuff. And Okay, so um, it's always hard to introduce what Crash is or uh, what, what, why you should use it. And um, yesterday I was talking with folks at, uh, here, and um, I, I said that uh, I always had issues to, not issues, but uh, to legitimate it or explain it. Why, why fundamentally did I start that? Because uh, I'm the founder of the project, and uh, I started it in 2009, and I was bored, not bored, but I was, it was during vacations, and. Uh, you know what geeks do during vacations? They always uh, take their keyboard and their computer and do stuff. And in my daily job, we are using uh, in portal stuff, um, a Java content repository database, and we didn't have uh, something to interact with the database. Uh, it's not like uh, today, you have, when you use MongoDB, you have the Mongo shell. Uh, well with MySQL, you have uh, obviously the, the command line to interact with, and we, so we did have nothing. So. Uh, I started to take a few existing open source bricks. Uh, it, by the time it was Nelly, uh, and of course Groovy, and I don't remember what else. And I was able in a few, in a few, in, in a couple of hours to get a system running where I could uh, parse command line interface, uh, CLI, and uh, load the Groovy script and populate it with uh, arguments and options, and then uh, execute it. And all of that in the context of my uh, Java content repository. And in a couple of hours, I was able to, to have a command line interface. And then thank, with the power of Groovy, I was able to, to develop all those commands uh, pretty quickly to interact with JCR and within a day. So, and, and, then, uh, and then step by step, I, I made a project of this. Uh, I improved it. I submitted to conferences. And, and most importantly, uh, we have been using it um, after in our product and in our projects to extend our project, to create a command line interface for our project. And that's, that's what uh, I'm going to talk about today. 
So crash, the latest version is, uh, so we have two versions at the moment, one to nine, one to three, candidate release five, and we are about to release the one to th the one three. Uh, the minimum requirements is Java 6 and Groovy 1.7. So it doesn't mean you don't have to use Groovy 1.7, of course, you, can, you, should, you should be using it with any Groovy version. And uh, it comes with uh, base commands and uh, extensions that we are going to see. Concept, so that's, uh, that slide is quite important because um, uh, the first thing I would like you to do is to, to, to um, so yesterday I tried to explain Crash to someone and he, he made the confusion with Grails because in Grails you have a command line interface too, uh, but it's external outside of the JVM. It means that it's a shell script that runs a JVM. And what, sh what, what Crash does is that it runs inside the JVM. And when you run inside the JVM, there are two ways basically to do it. Either you start your own JVM, and that is the standalone and attach mode we will see first. And then there is an embedded mode where Crash doesn't control anything, but instead it's called back by, uh, uh, for instance, a, a, a dependency injection container that will start it and, or in a server. Or it can even be a servlet uh, context, uh, initializers, that kind of stuff. And then there's the notion of connector. Crash is, is uh, decoupled from the command line interface per se. Uh, it means that we can either use the JVM uh, input and output which is what we do in standalone mode. Or we can provide connectors, uh, remote shell, so we have SSH and Telnet. And there's also a crash.js plus a WebSocket, which is a, a demo you may be using now. So let's tell you a bit the standalone mode and uh, how to make it work. So we'll start by creating a simple command. Uh, so this is a standalone mode. This is, so there are two ways to, one way today to get it is to download it. And uh, I'm talking at the moment with Marco to integrate it in JVM. Uh, so that will be very nice. And the other way to, to install it is to use Brew on, on Mac. So here is what you get when you unfold it. So you have a bin with crash, uh, bat, and sh. Uh, the command directory in which you have all the commands in Groovy that you can uh, change in real time if you want. Some are packaged, so you have subdirectories, so that's uh, really helpful to organize commands and by, by, uh, by kind of commands. So uh, we have the base commands, it's everything related to the JVM, so in here you have uh, things to interact with JMX, JDBC, threads, uh, uh, cron, it's, um, so that's, we have two plugins, it's a cron plugin and the mail plugin that we are going to see, and they have a commands to send email and uh, to cron, cron management. And we have a couple of other which are more like demo. In configuration directory, um, most of Crash is configured through Crash properties. Uh, there are a few uh, stuff to, I mean, items to configure, with, which is the SSH key or the cron tab. And finally, in lib, uh, here you, in standalone, you put everything that you want to be loaded in the class pass. So there is no, I mean, it's a, it's a bit, bit pretty basic standard JVM used. Okay, so let's start. I'm in the right folder, that's awesome. And now I'm running crash. Uh, <coughs> so, the first thing you want to do is to use help. Help will provide you, will list you all the commands uh, with uh, description when it's available. And then um, what can we do now? Uh, so most of the time when people think about uh, crash, they think about JMX. So of course we have a JMX command. If you use it, we see that it's a compound command, uh, like git style. So we can do a JMX query. Uh, so that interacts with the current uh, MBIN server in the JVM. So it's, it lists all the available mbins. If we want, we can have more information about an mbin. So we have uh, all this mbins metadata. And here, what you can notice is that we have very nice completion. That's one of the feature in Crash. So you know, the mbins names are always very difficult to to to, remem to remember. For instance, I'm going to use PSPMG and space, and that's it. 
And here we have all the information about the beans, all the attributes, and so on. And of course, I can uh, get um, uh, attributes. And I'm going to use one that is not too verbose, the class loading. It gives me the attributes as a table of, of this bean. The other nice comment we have is uh, thread. So I'm going to show it now because we are going to use it after. So thread, we can do several things with it. Uh, the first one is threadless. So that lists all the threads in the JVM and provides a nice view of them. So of course you can call it multiple times, but if you don't like that, you can do thread top. So that is a bit like a, a top, so you have a real-time view of the threads and you can interrupt it with control C. And um, that's pretty much about it. Uh, one interesting thing you can do is you can call thread stop, but it's something that is not really recommended. It's a bit like a kill, but it's not recommended because of, uh, of uh, some problems. And you have thread interrupts, which can be useful if you want to test what, how a thread behaves when you interrupt it. And here again, you have completion. So if I do that, I can interrupt with the thread 31. I don't know what it is doing, but uh, I'm interrupting it. <laughs> so it's quite fun. So now let's get back to command development and see our example. Uh, so the, bit for the, 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 the thing you need to do is just to, to create a command script. That's the most basic thing you can do and return something that will create a command. And uh, the command name will be, will be the file name before Groovy. So if you do hello.groovy, that will be hello, of course. Then we can make it a bit more complex um, and, and provide it as a class. And, and so we use the annotation add comment on the main method. And uh, this, I think it's the current example we have. Oh no, that's not this one actually. We'll see it after. And uh, so you want to use uh, something more complex when you want to do um, more advanced things like um, doing git style commands or provide arguments or options. And that's the git style. So git style use, uh, when you use main, by default it, it will use the main, uh, I mean, it, it will be what, what would be called like, like in a Java program. Uh, in case you name it differently, you have to do hello world like this. Um, so of course we can edit it in real time. Here we are, so let's increase the font size. And, and what we can do for instance, uh, is to add argument name. And now if I do the same hello world, it will, ah, it's not happy because uh, what did I do? <laughs> String, of course. How can I miss that? Hello null and uh, uh, it should print the name, but for some reason it doesn't do it. <laughs> ah, I know. <laughs> it's a puzzler, it was a hidden puzzler. <laughs> Nobody found. <laughs> now if I do hello, I have hello null, and, and then I can do hello world, and uh, and pretty much, and if I want it to, to be um, required, I have this little nice annotation. So if I do hello, it will uh, tell me that it's uh, not nice and I should provide an argument. Um, there is also, we can do the same with options, uh, but we are not going to do it. Uh, by default, you can do, on er any command, we, we use all those uh, annotations to create, uh, uh, to generate help and manual. Uh, so the problem is that for now we don't have anything about the name, so we can add it and use uh, the at usage, uh, the name to say. And now we have it. There we are. Uh, and uh, so, so far any questions? No? Let's continue with command pipelining because that's, I think, one of the most interesting features in Crash. Uh, that's the Unix philosophy. 
is um, it's like a bit like the trend now with microservices. It's a bit the same. It's uh, you should write small programs that focus on doing one thing and not create monolithic systems. So that's the same with the comments. It's uh, better if you design not only one command, but a set of commands that you will use uh, to, to create synergies between those. And that's uh, what we try to do also in Crash. If you are a bit familiar with uh, PowerShell, it's uh, basically the same idea. Um, so the previous slide mentioned that the universal way for commands, I mean for programs to communicate, is to use, uh, what they say, uh, text stream. Uh, but it, Obviously, in the JVM, it's uh, not really, uh, I mean, it's possible, but that reduces a lot what we can do. And so instead of having a text stream, you have an object stream. So in Crash, uh, any command um, with a little effort, instead of sending text to the output, you can send objects. And then it can also consume, of course, objects. And then you can create those, reuse those commands to, to do more powerful things. Um, that's the basic example here. Uh, so we, I do a thread ls uh, with a thread dump, and then I made it so we can try it step by step to see what happens. So if I do thread ls, I did it before. I have this very nice view, and now I can do man thread ls, and it will give me a bit more information. In, in particular, there is this stream here. This stream de describes a bit what the command consumes and what it produces. In case of uh, this thread ls, it's a void thread. It means that it consumes nothing and it produces threads. And now, if I do thread ls, so I can do thread dump it's, uh, by standalone also. With, uh, I can dump just one single thread, and that gives me the current dump of this one. Or I can do thread ls pipe thread dump. And in that case, I have everything. And then I can uh, use the mail command. That so the mail command is able to consume text. And if you send objects to them, it will find a nice way to render those objects to text with uh, renderers, which is a feature we'll see. Uh, we will not see it later, but I will mention it. Uh, great conf and to myself. And I should receive this email. Uh, so that's pretty much about it. So yes, pipeline example. So we have two kinds. Uh, so we have producers and consumers. I mean, filters, pipe. Uh, let's see. Yes, there is this example. So that's a groovy example. I wanted to code it live, uh, but I don't know if I have time. No, time is running fast. Well, I could do it. I, come on, let's try. But well, it's already there, actually. I tried, uh, I did a rehearsal before. So this, uh, this is the same command, uh, but in a less groovy way, because that's the way I will write it myself. And the other version on the slide, the nice one, is, is done by, by Guillaume. Uh, so this one is, uh, so when you have a thread, um, a filter command, you have to return a pipe object. Um, the question is, the reason is that the producer will produce things, and all the commands uh, in, in the chain will, will be call back with provide, and in provide they can do whatever they want with the object. In that case, we only, uh, we only let the straight objects, which are daemons, to, to go through the, the stream. And of course, when you do a, a, a pipe that, that returns another object, then you can transform it and, and, and adapt it to whatever you want. Uh, in this case, if I use it, I do thread ls pipe daemon. And I just have the daemon threads. And uh, now I should have received, uh, yes, the email of the thread dump I just sent myself uh, a few minutes ago. So we have, obviously here, uh, imagination is, uh, <laughs> is your limit. Uh, with basics commands, what we can do, uh, it's uh, we can log things, so log ls. LogLS will, will do like ThreadLS, it will log all the loggers of the JVM. And uh, LogSend, it will send a message. So if I do that, it will send a message, uh, a hello message to all loggers. 
uh, with arc.crsh uh, name. Uh, system propolis, in that case, um, we list all the system properties and we filter them by name and then we sort them. And last one is, um, is a little uh, JMX query, JMX get. Uh, before we use JMX get with a name directly and here we can make a JMX query with a filter and that will provide an aggregated view of, uh, of uh, I can try it. Yes, it works. Uh, we have an aggregated view. In that case, we use the garbage collector and means to get some information. Then it's up to you to to do whatever you want, you need, obviously. Uh, the REPL, uh, by default, so the REPL is a read eval print loop. Um, I will not insult you until you teach you what it is. Uh, you all have GUI shell, so you know what it is, <laughs> probably, and Scala, they have this. In Java, we don't have it. And um, so let's talk about the REPL. Um, by default, we have the script REPL. Um, that's the first one that I wrote that was designed um, until it's, it's, uh, it was there since the beginning. And, and by default, it parses a command line interface uh, with arguments and options, and it does uh, uh, very nice things like escaping uh, codes. And also, it, it, it understands the, the pipe notation to create pipes, but after that, it doesn't go farther. You could expect that it uh, provides a kind of bash uh, syntax or something like that, but we don't do it because it's, uh, I mean, it would be another project to do, uh, to find some kind of bash parser and bash runtime on the JVM. And instead, what we choose to do in, in Crash 1.3 is to provide uh, the new Groovy REPL. Um, so this one is pretty much similar to the Groovy shell. Uh, so in here, you can evaluate Groovy expressions. And, uh, so to use it, there is a REPL command. Uh, REPL lists all the available REPLs, and for now there are two scripts and Groovy. So if we do script REPL Groovy now, I can evaluate expressions. Uh, I don't know what kind of Groovy expression is nice to do something like this, or well, I will, uh, I will shoot myself in the foot. <laughs> Not a good idea. Um, but what is, what is quite cool is that we provide a DSL for this. So if I do thread, like before, it gives me, tells me thread. Okay, this is nice. Now if, what, but what is it? So if I do thread class, it gives me a pipeline closure. Pipeline closure is a Groovy object, uh, I mean crash object in Groovy that, that, that wraps uh, a command. So we can encapsulate it and do A equals thread. And then if I do A, I have it. So I can either invoke it directly, so it's a, because it's a closure, and that will be the same like before. Uh, if I want to invoke thread ls, I do it this way. And we, have, we do have exactly the same. And I can, what is very nice in Groovy is that we can overload uh, operators. So in that case, I choose to overload the or operator. So if I do thread ls pipe thread dump, and the trick here is to evaluate that after, I mean, to put the parentheses uh, above everything, I mean, around everything, otherwise it would uh, not work, of course. And um, so before we saw that uh, we have this pipe command, and what is very nice in the REPL Groovy is that we, we integrate the pipe with uh, closures. So. Here, is, instead of doing a thread dump, I can add a Groovy closure and filter uh, daemon threads. So, or do something different. I can return an hash map, for instance. And that hash map will contain uh, thread.id, name, thread.name. And in that case, we get a table, table view thanks to this. So we have a pretty much, I mean, a very, very nice integration with, uh, with this. Uh, obviously, everything is documented. Uh, if you want, you can try it online. Uh, one tip, if you want to go back to the classical REPL, you have to do this with the Groovy syntax, of course. OK. 
Okay, so more cool stuff. So what, what else do we have? Um, uh, that the other features. So um, creating your own crash-like framework is, is not hard. I told you I was able to, do, to get something running in a couple of hours, and I'm, probably, I'm, I'm pretty sure that everyone here is able to do the same, and even spend one week or two weeks to make something uh, nice uh, and very nice. Um, but what takes time is to do everything uh, correct and uh, handle all the, use, all the different cases. And provide, providing those features on top of Crash wasn't easy. Uh, so what we do provide are completers. Completers, while they are not hard to do, uh, um, so completers, you have seen them in action. So by default, you provide completers for object names, uh, file names, um, threads, etc., etc. You can obviously create your own completers very easily. Uh, so, for instance, if in command, you can reuse easily also completers. If in command, you have a type, which is a file type, then uh, Crash will, treat, will transform the, the string in a file object, and it will also do completions on this. So when, the, when you use it, you have this out of the box easily. Renderers, renderers are important. The, if we want to make the, this, um, this stream of object work, we have to, to, have t to remove text from the equation. And uh, so the question, what happens when the objects reach the end of the stream, should we call to string or do something? And we have this notion of render, and render, it's uh, just a simple declaration in, a, it's a, you know, you choose the Java util service loader to load the renderer. And renderers have the opportunity to transform uh, the objects into text, into a text version. So we do provide also many default renderers, uh, I can show you, with Repl Groovy. If I do thread, dot current thread. That will returns me um, the current thread. And instead of having uh, the two string, it will create a nice table. Pretty much the same with, uh, with uh, maps. So in a command, um, you can either use uh, your objects and create renderers, or reuse base, I mean, uh, maps, for instance, it's a very nice uh, interoperable way. In the future, we, we would like to support JSON to have something more universal, but uh, it's not easy because we still want to remain fully integrated with Java and do some kind of conversion, so that's something we'll do later. Uh, keyboards. Keyboard wasn't easy to, to get right because um, of the threading model. So we wanted to, uh, because usually when you read a stream, it's a blocking operation. So if in a command you would read keyboard events, you will have to run a thread as a tool to uh, get all the events and do some kind of synchronization. Uh, so instead, you have uh, event-driven event, uh, key, no, key event-driven uh, commands. So you implement uh, something and you go call back with a key event. And interruption. So before I showed you the thread top, if I interrupt it, no. If I interrupt it, it will, how does it work? It will uh, just interrupt the current thread. So in your command, when you, want, when you do a producer that never stops to do something, you have just to, to do a thread sleep, and in the thread sleep, when you wake up, wh when it wakes up or you get out, you have to just to, to test the thread interrupted status, and it's, uh, that is documented in the doc. And the last one is also screen uh, streaming styling, so we can provide colors and uh, you can push uh, the stream of data with a flash and clear the screen and, and take control of it like we have seen in ThreadLS. So now let's, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, move on to the attach mode. So I think I spend maybe a bit more time on this. Uh, attach mode, so I'm going to show it quickly. So this is, attach mode is still standalone. So that's JBoss application server. And attach mode, I'm going to do exactly the same that I've, seen befo I've done before, except that I'm going to use JPS to get the PID. So JBoss modules is JBoss, and I'm, here is crash. Now I provide the PID. And now crash is running inside the other virtual machine. So I can do log send 
minus m hello rate conf and what do I have on my console? I have the hello great conf. And what is awesome is that you can use, you have no comments, what, what does an application server provide? It's GNDI, data source, JPA. So here we have GNDA find to list everything in uh, GNDI. We have this uh, JDBC command. So we do JDBC command works either with a URL of, uh, of a driver or in case of here, I can reuse uh, the data source. And I open, now I'm connected to the database and I do JDBC properties and it's, uh, no, it's uh, props. All the driver properties, JDBC tables, we list all the tables and of course I can do JDBC select everything from, uh, so I do have a customer application and I can see my, my customers, and I can also do inserts, everything I can do with the database. It's pretty much like a universal uh, driver. And when I'm done, I do JDBC close. And we do have also the same with JPA. So we have JPA open. And for those using JPA, uh, so I'm not really good in JPA. So what I know I can do is select C from Customer, C, and I can do the same with uh, JPA queries. So it's really nice if you want to test uh, uh, your JDBC queries or, or your JPA queries. Uh, so that was the touch mode. Now we focus on embedding crash. Uh, that's a very important part because I expect uh, most of you to not use uh, the standalone. The standalone is used as a hacking tool this way to prototype things and see things. Um, it's a bit like a Swiss knife, very powerful. However, when you want to extend your runtime, you see that uh, my standalone mode is pretty empty and in embedding, um, uh, there is some context that run crash and, and what is nice is that often the context takes its all domain objects and put them in the context. So when you write comments, you can access those objects, the services, the data, everything. Uh, from your comments. Uh, with this, you can extend very quickly and very easily uh, your runtime. Uh, so we bootstrap is done um, uh, using a programmatic API if there is no other solution. So otherwise we have pre-made integration for Spring and Servlet. So quite easy. That's designed for, from the scratch, I mean from scratch for embedding. So it's like, it's modular first. So it means that if you use crash core, you will not have SSH connection. You have to use also crash SSH to get it. So you pay for what you want to use uh, in terms of uh, dependencies, memory footprint, CPU, everything. It's quite lightweight and um, there are more uh, integration hooks like a virtual file system, which can be useful um, when you want to provide your comments, not from the real file system, but from a database or whatever. And uh, concerning the ecosystem, that is very important part of Crash. Uh, so you have successful integrations, so I did a few of them. Um, Vertex, that's the first I did. Exo platform, of course, since we use it. And the other ones have been provided. Of course, there is a Grace integration that you are going to see just after, if I go faster. Uh, that was uh, contributed by, uh, it's already available in Grace, but it used the old version. And I did work to update it to the latest crash version, but it's not yet in the plugin repository. So that was contributed at the Hacker Garden uh, two years ago at DevOx by uh, Stefan. And uh, we also have, do, do have the Spring Boot uh, integration, if you are a Spring Boot user, or Play Framework. Um, <coughs> so let's see a bit uh, about the Grace plugin and what we can do with it. Okay, I still have plenty much of time. Uh, so now I will start IntelliJ. So we are not in this, and uh, I took the Grace Pet Clinic application. Um, I think it's a bit small for most of you. There is a presenter mode that I will switch to. Uh, but first, before that, uh, declaration is uh, quite uh, easy. If you are 
using it's uh, you had the compile dependency on crash uh, 1.3 uh, version. Where is it beta one? Why well, shouldn't be with beta one? But it works. And uh, when you so when I start started to use Grails, uh, I spent quite a lot of time on that. I didn't know Grails at all two weeks ago, and now I'm more comfortable with it. Well, it's nice. I learn new things, and that's a fantastic opportunity for me. And I didn't expect Grails to do so much time. Um, I mean, I thought Grails was a runtime, but it's divided in two parts. There is a scavenging, um, build thing, and there's the runtime part. Um, so what does the, we, we do have the an install script for Crash, and, and when you run it, so how will it first, how will it run Crash? It will run Crash as a, as a Spring application, as a Spring web application. Uh, so it will look for the commands and everything in the crash directory, exactly like we have seen before. Uh, so the commands are in base, so you do have all the, it will com copy all the base commands, so you can modify them, and if there is an issue, you just delete it and you reinstall or you use some Grails magic and it will be there again. There, there are a few specific Grails commands I developed. Application, Grails, and plugin. So, and that's what we're going to see now. So now I shall start my, oh, so it's Grails, run, app. Let's start it. So it used latest, I may be sorry for that, it used the, the very latest version, 2.3.8. Server running. <coughs> so that's the interest of SSH. That now, as Crash doesn't control anymore um, the standards input output of the GVM, we connect with uh, SSH. And here we are. Again, with help, I can do everything. I can, of course, if I want, switch to, to, to the Groovy REPL. Here, I can do things like, uh, well, what is nice is that it executes with all the Grails context, so I can, so I'm going to try to do it. Uh, I can, for instance, do GORM. Test GORM queries and I get a result. And um, what else can I do? I can uh, reuse the Grails data source. For this, I have to use the Grails, uh, oh, okay. It's not happy because uh, I am in the Groovy REPL. I always forget that, so let's go back to. Uh, so for now, Grails is a wrapper for Grails application object. And the only thing we have is Grails data source. And what it does is that it's like JDBC open you have seen with JBoss application server. Uh, so now I can do JDBC tables and list all the tables and do a JDBC select star from uh, vet, not found, uh, pet, or something. But it's empty. I don't see vet, so I don't know what vet is. Uh, Maybe it's vet specialty. Which one? Uh, I don't know this application. <laughs> See a bit, I know it a bit. Well, anyway, let's not waste time on that. Uh, yes, other things we can do is um, application provides, uh, so for now it's mostly read-only things. Um, maybe you are, uh, as Grails experts, you can enhance that and that would be very, very, very good. So we can list uh, all the controllers. So that's, I think, useful to check things. Uh, for controllers, you have the URIs of the mappings uh, of those controllers. Uh, uh, URL mappings, uh, services, uh, codecs. Uh, I will not lie, I took everything I could expose and put it there. <laughs> And last one is plugins. We have a, com a plugin command to list all plugins. 
which are currently deployed in the application. And uh, from a plugin, we can get information. Uh, for instance, let's say cache plugin information. So I have all those informations. I believe it can be useful. And uh, I think I can also know plugin configuration. Or it's in the controller, no application. That's also useful, I think. Application config, we can get the whole application config. So that's uh, pretty much uh, about it. Uh, so that's my last uh, technical, not technical slide, but on the story just begins uh, because I started with some super time. Um, and, and I will now have a bit time to talk about my vision. And um, before I, I mentioned uh, PowerShell, and uh, if you know a bit this tool, that's incredible what uh, you can do on Microsoft platform with PowerShell because and, and the force of this is not because they have a design or whatever or an object stream. It's because all the products, most all the products, Microsoft products, integrates with PowerShell. It means that with this shell, you can uh, script everything. And, uh, and, and for that, and that's what I would like Crash to become or to be. And for this, that's important. That's the important part I mentioned before with the ecosystem. And um, I'm, I'm, I mean, to, to make Crash go forward, I'm evangelizing it um, and try to get people adopt it, use it in their own time, create comments, and hopefully someday, soon, uh, Crash will have some kind of uh, repository feature where uh, you can deploy um, not plugins but integration comments, and Crash could be used as uh, this universal. Uh, scripting uh, tool that I believe that the JVM can benefit. So wrap up. Um, so as you have seen, Crash is a multifacet, uh, powerful Swiss knife. Uh, there is no not one single usage. The usage is really what you want to do with it. You can adapt it. It's flexible enough. It was designed in this uh, with this spirit, and. Um, and um, then I, I would like just you to, to use it, provide feedback. Uh, go on our community. So we have a Crash Users uh, Google Groups. I believe here everyone has at least uh, one uh, Google account. Um, Twitter, uh, at Crash, and of course there is a website, uh, crashup.org. Uh, do you have questions? No? You? Uh, no, it, it doesn't have dependency on Groovy. And actually, Crash can run without Groovy, but uh, as most of the commands are written in Groovy, you will have uh, an empty shell. You will have just a few commands. You will have the REPL and the HELP, because those are, uh, yay, ghost poltergeist. <laughs> Uh, those comments are what we call system comments. They are comments you cannot change that are always here. So, any other question? So today, uh, if you are in a company and you're interested in having people experts in production having written uh, their own commands, the only way to get this is by copying the commands to other users, or? Uh, what do you mean? If you make new commands. Yes. Distribute it. Uh, it depends, I think, how you use Crash. If you use a centralized si central system uh, that uses this command, then you will just push this command to, to the central system. Uh, then, either, yes, for distributing, you have to, to give it to people. Uh, you, can put, you can pack commands in jar files uh, in standalone mode. If you, I mean, now we are talking about standalone mode. By default, all, all the commands in standalone mode are in jar files. And when it's run the first time, it will scan all the jars and uh, extract those commands and copy them into the command directory we have seen before. So they could, you could use some kind of dependency mechanism to do that to, to get the commands. Uh, in case you want, you need a special um, distribution. Uh, well, there is one way actually in, um, in um, there's a new feature in uh, Crash 1.3. It's called mount points. 
I hope I have the right pronunciation. And mount points, they allow you, it allows you in any configuration to define uh, like a path. Uh, so when we are in standalone mode, the mount point is uh, class pass crash commands. So it will find all the commands in, in this. Um, uh, class pass is kind of name of the, where, and we have, we do have the other we have is our file and, and war file. Uh, so you could modify this to get the commands from a shared uh, directory uh, on the network. In case of embedded, um, you have this virtual file system I mentioned before, and uh, you could implement, for instance, in XWiki, it's a wiki, uh, they embed crash, they have a plugin for crash. And in XWiki, the VFS integration will look for commands stored in, uh, in uh, XWiki pages instead of a database or whatever. So thanks to that, they were able to adapt it to their own needs. And in pretty much the same in, 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 um, in Bootstrap, uh, not Bootstrap, uh, Spring Boot, uh, they do have a virtual face system implementation that will take that, that is a wrapper on top of uh, the um, resource beans in uh, Spring. Uh, so that's how integration works with Spring. Yes? Yeah. Um, how about security? Is there any way to sort of check security, set up different users having different uh, so levels? So the question is uh, about security. Um, I must admit that crash is a bit weak on this, uh, not weak, but we haven't done anything. So the, the last we should do in, uh, is to provide some way to intercept and provide your own security. Uh, concerning authentication, so that was authorization. So by default, yes, everyone is uh, more, it, it can be very powerful and very dangerous. Uh, yeah. That's uh, something you need to be aware of. So either you restrict it to people you know. So first, if you don't want uh, people to have too much power, you remove the groovy REPL, because with that you can do, <laughs> trust me. Well, we can try online if you want. Uh, see, I do REPL groovy, and here I can do system command, uh, system.exit.0. Obviously, I have a security manager, so it's a nice try dude, try other, so you can try other things if you want. And if you manage to break it, send me an email so I can add a new, a new check, <laughs> of course. Um, a concerning authorization, there is a authorization can is pluggable either with a key username, a username password, or in case of SSH, uh, you can provide your own SSH, uh, an SSH key set um, to, to, get, uh, to get the SSH keys. Any other question? No, thank you.